Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about cameras. This is a color camera and this is our mono camera. So we will see 2600 MC versus 2600 MM. So comparing mono versus color, this is not a new thing. Uh, you find a lot of videos on the web, but we will do it here in a different way. The different way is like the following. First part is theoretical part. We will see what is the potential of uh, each sensor in collecting photons from a target, which is one, a nebula, and a second one, a galaxy. In the second part, we will look at pixel inside pictures and compare galaxy photos versus nebula photos. And then finally, we will come to a conclusion. You will see in this video there will be some surprises in it, uh, which I also didn't expect. And uh, I hope you will enjoy it. So join me on my computer. So guys, welcome to our comparison. <clears throat> color camera versus mono camera. I will use MC for color in the next minutes and MM for mono. Our question was, is the mono version worth the extra money or should I better spend it in telescopes or somewhere else. Okay, let's get started. We will talk about basic data camera comparison. So MM versus MC, we will have a quick look at signal to noise ratio definition. We will look then at the Bayer matrix versus mono pixels. And then the big two ones, we are calculating photons for a galaxy and a nebula. And then we are analyzing pictures with pics inside. And then we come finally to a summary. So let's get started. Um, when you compare the MM versus the MC, the MC is on the left side, the MM is on the right side. Both sensors are almost with all features identical. Biggest differences for the MC, of course, it has a Bayer pattern, R, G, G, B. R stands for red, G for green, B for blue. And uh, of course, the quantum peak uh, for the MC is lower than for the MM. By the way, of course, um, the MM has no Bayer matrix. That's that's uh, that's not there. Um, last but not least, the MC has an UV IR cut window, where the MM doesn't have the uh, IR cut. Um, it's there is transmission up to I think 1100 nanometer. Probably I'm wrong with that. I should have a look into the data file from ZWO. All this information is from the website of ZWO. So SNR, we are fight for SNR. What is SNR? SNR is, is an abbreviation for signal to noise ratio. So we want to increase signal, which is our photons, and when we and we want to reduce our noise, which can also be photons, but which can also be electrons in your silicium matrix. So we want to get rid of the noise and increase our signal. And our complete equipment has only one goal: increase signal to noise. In order to do that, we have the choice between color and mono cameras. So when we look into the color camera, all color cameras, OSC, so one shot color cameras, or your DSLRs have a Bayer matrix. What is a Bayer matrix? A Bayer matrix is this, uh, this color here, this color pattern <clears throat> you see here on top of the pixel. So, um, and you see that's a normal distribution of uh, four pixels with one red, two green, one blue. And when we look it, at the light yeah, passing or trying to pass this red pixel in this example, only the red light can of course pass. So only 25% of your sensor is can be activated. And for the green, it's 50%. And for the blue, it's again like for the red, 25%. So you never can use the full resolution of your camera. And this is again this red example picture here. Um, green light gets absorbed, blue light gets absorbed, only the red light can pass and gives you a signal on your silicium. Where with the mono cameras, all there is no color 
filter on top of the pixel that's gone it's only the gray ones you can imagine and all pixel can pass through so what do we do when we have a mono camera as we have no bayer matrix um, how do we get the colors so we use filters we use a red filter a green filter and a blue filter and of course we use a luminance filter and a luminance filter is nothing than an uv ir cut ir cut filter and the majority of the light goes into the luminance and then the rest of the light let's say 50 percent of your light goes then equally distributed to red green and blue and finally you have what we call an lrgb picture which is in this case also quite nice so you have all the colors in and you don't spend so much time on the colors then time on the luminance and luminance that is what brings you resolution the fine details the quality of the picture so let's go ahead um, when we talk about monoverse color cameras we have also to talk about the uh, filters and you see on the top this is an lrgb filter and uh, they are very steep filters for for blue green and red ones but you see a gap between the green and the red filter and uh, that comes because there is some light pollution of your lamps uh, emission in this wavelength and uh, that's cut out so it acts like a built-in light pollution filter those lrgb filters and when you ask where is the l the l goes from here from there over all colors and wavelengths down then here and that's it that's the luminance filter so a luminance filter covers the whole visible spectrum from 400 something nanometer up to 700. Then we have narrowband filter and narrowband filter, they have not this wide gap. They have, they are very small. They have a distribution depending on how much money you pay for them between let's say 12 nanometer down to three nanometer wavelength. They have transmission so that they are open for that light. And as closer they are, as uh, higher the quality of the image is but on the other side you reduce a lot of photons on the left and right side so they are not passing through your filter what you see here that's an o3 filter in the 500 nano nanometer range then that's a red filter and beside the red filter that's for alpha you have the s2 filter which is also in the red spectrum so with a red sensor with a red pixel you get only both both uh, wavelengths uh, gives you a red signals on your sensor so keep that in mind for for later and uh, transmission rates of course is never 100 percent of those filters um, it's uh, very good filters are in the range of 1995 but they can also go down and uh, quantum efficiencies you see uh, one of the camera with quantum efficiency here it's distributed in the range of 50 percent so that's not that high please keep that in mind depends of course on each sensor the most modern sensor they have higher quantum efficiencies what we have seen in the mc there's some 80 percent quantum efficiency but it's also distributed like this like a curve um, <clears throat> so when we calculate photons for our two cameras what is the basic idea basic idea is we have an object and we have an object that emits photons and those photons are red ones blue ones and green ones and they hit the sensor that's quite simple so when we assume that the object emits a certain number of r g and b photons we can then calculate those photons which have the probability to give a signal on our sensor so let's go into that so we are calculating photons for the first example which is a galaxy on the left side you see the color sensor on the right side the mono sensor the mono sensor can use all of its pixels right the color sensor depending on which photon wavelength it is can collect a certain number but maximum is 25 percent of red 50 percent for the green and 25 percent for the blue our object emits 10 10 uh, photons per second in a distribution of one to one to three so one red one blue three green exposure time is 60 seconds and then now we measure what comes out after six uh, after 60 seconds and that's an example for the first 10 seconds um, we will come to that in a detail but that is just for illustration that you know how this principle works here our filter is a uh, light pollution filter and uh, when we go to the mono sensor all pixels can be used 
for red with a red filter, for green with a green filter, and for blue with a blue filter in front of those uh, pixels. And then you collect the photons. And of course, you also use a luminance filter on top of those photons. So let's see where we end up. So that's our calculation. 60 seconds distribution 1 to 1 to 3 for R, G, for R, B, G. And uh, on the left side, you see the color cam. After 60 seconds, you collected 240 photons. On the right side, you see the mono cam. They collect 400 photons. And uh, that is because 30 seconds went into the luminance and 10 seconds each into R, G, and B. So here, clearly, the mono camera wins when uh, we have a theoretical approach on galaxies. So how does it look when we look into nebulas? So this is a nebula object now. And uh, we have for this nebula object also 60 seconds photon collection time. But the distribution is different. We have distribution of H alpha, six photons, O3, three photons, and S2, one photon for each second. All right. But we use now a trick for the color camera. We use a triband filter. And that means H alpha photons are collected in 60 seconds, six H alpha per second, multiplied by um, the factor of 0.25. So you don't use a full sensor, of course. That is in some 90 second, 90, sorry, 90 H alpha photons. When you do the same for O3, you can use both uh, biomatrix pixels, blue and the green one, because they both get stimulated by the wavelengths of O3, which is right between green and blue. So you collect a lot more. You collect 135 O3 photons. And for the S2, OK, that looks not so good. It's 15 S2 photons. So in sum, it's 240 photons versus um, 200 photons here. On the mono camera where you collect 20 seconds H alpha, 20 seconds O3, and 20 seconds S2. So that would mean here the color camera might win. But is that really true? Let's see. Let's come to our real photos. <clears throat> and you see here pics inside photos um, MM on the left side, MC on the right side. Uh, in the first place, it's M101. It's a Messier object. We use the same PIX inside procedure, post-processing management. Both were done with an RCA, so Richie Cretian 8 telescope. And uh, <coughs> exposure time for both some pictures is four hours. For the MM, it's distributed 40 seconds for each color, uh, 40 minutes for each color, and two hours for luminance where the MC collects four hours uh, color data. So, and when we look into the details, I mean, I made here a little um, magnification of that area. Um, the blue one looks really, really, really nice. And the arms are here seen very nicely, where when you look at the color, it looks a little bit dimmer. However, you can see that. I hope you can probably see that also on your screen. Um, and we can, if we, if we bump up the uh, the blue color, um, I think we would have a similar picture like with the MM version. So I would say basically, yes, the MM looks for me a little bit nicer, but you can achieve almost identical results with the MC. And uh, now let's look into the nebula. So that's a uh, pixel inside picture from M16, a nebula object. And here on the left side, the MM, on the right side, the MC. Here we used uh, the three filters, H alpha, H alpha uh, S2 and O3. Here a um, Richie Cretion telescope was used. Here a Newton telescope was used. And here we use also, and that's more important, the L enhance filter from Octolong. Um, that's basically a tree band filter. Yeah, it, it, it collects uh, H beta, uh, H beta, no, H beta probably not, but O3, H alpha, and S2. So, and what you see here is um, a magnified part of the of the uh, of the columns, and um, I think with the 
MM picture, everything looks better, more detailed structures of the uh, um, clouds here of these parts of the nebula um, where you can see it here as well, but it's not so distinguished, it's not so fine details uh, available with our MC camera. So I would say here clearly for narrowband filters the MM wins. What is our summary? The summary is both, I think basically both sensors have its advantages, a lot of advantages. Both are nice cameras, but where do I see the advantages for the MC is in terms of cost. Yeah, it's much cheaper, oh, not cheaper, but less costly than the MM. And the post-processing goes much faster because you have only to work with one picture. Uh, you collect RGB at the same time. You don't have to worry about, oh, probably the clouds are coming in and my blue filter doesn't work. So I have to do it next night. Um, this is not the problem with the uh, MC. And uh, you don't need filter wheel investments, etc. It doesn't uh, add, your, add weight to your telescope. And I think basically the MC is very good for galaxies, especially the big ones. Uh, not the faint ones. For the faint ones, I would use <laughs> what you see here in the second part. I would use probably the MM. But for galaxies in general, the MC is a fantastic choice. And it also works, of course, with tri-band filters uh, very well. So, um, yeah. Um, let's have a quick look at the advantages of the 2600. I think it's very good when you do Hubble palettes. And it has a higher resolution than the MC because uh, we are using 100% of the pixels and not 25 or 50 percent and uh, i think it's a better choice if you have faint objects like rip um, galaxies and uh, finally i think in narrowband images you get much more detail out of the image um, and that's uh, for me the mm i use for narrowband and the mc i use for galaxies i hope i could help you with that a little bit and uh, for me it was quite interesting some some things were yeah surprising me because in theory the mc became better than in narrowband than the mm but uh, you see picture tell another story so um, finally what is a better camera there is no better camera it depends on your choice what do you want to photograph and uh, there are just some factors you should consider like i've put here together Okay, then uh, I wish you clear skies and thanks for watching. Bye bye.